present a couple of scripts that, that I write in art in order to, to fill some plots and tables um, the, from data coming from surveyor card data sets. So as uh, the words of, of the scripts was taking so much time to process, I kept the necessity to 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 build a chop array in slur in order to process information uh, more efficiently. So as you know, we were in we are still in transaction to upgrade from from LGE to slur. So in the middle of the way I I think that not just but many of us we have to 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 solve many challenges to to make it run properly. So these scripts are not the the last version. It's just a, a way to to share with all of you uh, what are the most important things that I have I have had to do in order to to run my 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 jobs. So um uh, all these words based uh, mostly in two resources. One is the the meetings that are provided for the for the GSPCE uh, team. You know that they have these meetings, I think, weekly, and and they are providing a lot of resources. They are not giving the full information in the same meeting, but they are providing some links that I attach to the end. Where, where say additional resources, so I have to check, check. Um, well, I can scan most of them looking for solutions in, in some stages of, of my of my job. And also I can check the Slack channel where most of the people have been provided, uh, provided uh, some ways to, to solve some issues. Well, in order to, to, to make it interactive, I build uh, different kind of slums. Uh, the first slum is uh, the one that I call the, the slum loop that is going to process five different experiments and it's labeled with good because it's the one that is working fine. Uh, but this is this is the this is the uh, let's to say the ideal scenario because uh, before to have this script I have many errors in order to process information different kind of errors so uh, that is why I write two other scripts that in purpose uh, are failing so just in order to highlight uh, what are some kind of clumsy uh, issues that I didn't see at the beginning, but maybe uh, when we are starting with this, we can make this kind of issues. Okay, so first I'm going to explain what the script does. Okay, I'm going to go to R, here's the screen. Let me explain a bit lines, it's not, it's not very huge, but it's enough to explain uh, the job array. Okay, in this um, in this script uh, has the purpose to plot the units by sample, and also uh, creates a table uh, with the statistics about uh, the gene expression aside of uh, surveyor R data sets, and the statistic the statistics are. Uh, are uh, some measures, uh, mostly are quantities of different of different measures that are done with them to those. So uh, I load the libraries and then I load some custom function functions. Uh, the first one is to build the paths because I have to uh, to access different uh, kind of uh, experiments that are in different paths, in different things, and also because uh, I have to access different kind of, of data. And some data are filtered data, but some other are uh, processing data. In the second one, 
is when I build, uh, I call functions to build the Sebat object. So I made this way in order to make it simple here to read and not uh, take too much, atten too much attention into the, into the Serranger R data sets. That is not the purpose of this talk. So uh, this argument uh, parameter is to catch the, the number of the experiment that I'm going to process. Uh, and it's taken here in sample. I'm taking the argument one. And then uh, this sample is, is passed to a function that is going to get uh, it's going to get the full path uh, of a filtered barcode matrix and it's going to be saved here in this variable. After that, I pass the, the full path to, to another function that is going to create a separate object. Uh, that basically is going to load uh, the gene expression and chromatin accessibility information, and it's going to be, be returning in an object that is called several object. Uh, the several object it has this like appearance. Then, um, then uh, I'm going to to prepare. Uh, I'm going to sorry. I'm going to pull the mitochondrial percentage that it was previously calculated here, and I'm going to build a plot, and I'm going to save it uh, into this uh, into this part. After that, I call another function that is going to build the statistics in a table. The table has these different issues. Most of these are quantiles, and then. Um, I'm going to stay apart to save the table and the table is going to be saved. So the script basically uh, do those two things, uh, build a plot and build a table. So I'm going to go back here to show you that I have prepared the folder where this information is going to be saved. If I go now to plots, we have this information. I'm going to delete it to show how the information is there. Okay, so I delete all the previously information saved and I'm going to, be, to, to go to logs and in logs we have anything now. Okay, so now I'm going to go to uh, the script. Let's start with, with the good one. This is the, it's this one. I'm going to show you this. Okay. This is the script. Okay. So this script is a Slurm site that is going to interact with this script. Okay. The script that is going to build the, the plot and the table. So uh, the script uh, starts with some uh, directives that are, pro are proper of Slurm. But I have add some additional information like the email to receive this information here in my Gmail. Yes, here I'm receiving all the all the comments and all the all the results of the of the of the one. So this first is in the in this first the S batch. Uh, mail user, I I type my the email where I want to receive the information, and I also add that I want to receive information about the type of information that is uh, returning to me, and also I want to know if the process fails. So I receive this information in the email. Then one of the most clumsy errors I think that I made. Is try is because I try to say the the log files uh, produces for the pipeline uh, inside a log folder. Okay, but uh, I have these lines in this way. Before to have it this way, I'm going to move it from here. I'm going to put these lines, and I'm going to provide that after here. I'm going. To 
I want to put it here. So you are going to see that when I run this pipeline, uh, this this is this is log uh, script. Uh, the log files are not going to be stored where I want. I want to store the logs in the log folder. But uh, I have this, the order here imports, imports, it's important. So when you uh, declare the number of arrays or, or jobs that you want to run before to declare the number of output of outputs, uh, by default, uh, the information uh, is going to be saved in the root path. It's not going to be saved in the logs folder because here the order matters. So let's do make an example of this. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to go to code. And, okay. So here's the information. I'm going to show you the logs. In the logs, is there anything? And also I'm going to show you the blocks, the plot folder. There is nothing there. Okay, now I'm going to run to run the the script. Sorry. I'm going to run the script. If this one, I oh know if the if the one called boot. Okay. And I'm going to run it. I'm going to see if the what is the what is the state of the process. Now I'm going to see here, and you can see here that these are the jobs, the job arrays that I build. Uh, the job arrays, let's do with this information, according with this information. Okay, we have, uh, to build this name, we have the, the number of the job arrays, the number of the job array that is a sequential number that is provided by the manager administrator is this one, is the, is the big number. And then the, the array or the specific, um, uh, yes, index that is, that is assigned is this number, one, two, three, four, and five. That this is the number that I attach here. I'm saying that I want to build an array that is composed from one to five jobs. So it's going to build five indexes, as you can see here. So this number need to be changed according with the number of job, jobs that you are going to build. For example, if I'm going to build 50 or 10, I need to change here from, from one to 10. And that's the, that's the relation that it has with this index. After this, I'm saying that I want to build, uh, I want to assign uh, the partition is in the share. How, the, how I know that? Well, if you go to, to info, we can see that we have this shared uh, computer nodes assignments uh, to, to run our jobs. So here's, here's assignment here. And the job name is the one that we see here. No, no, it's in the output, sorry. The, the, job, the job name is, I assign this job name, but when I put information here, I'm reading the number of the file or the script that I'm processing. And then in this part, this is my username, the state uh, is the, the one is, okay, it's like, clearly say that, is the state that is uh, actually my job. And I here attach some information about the states because I have received a different kind of, of states. Now it's in the R that it means that it's running, like here, it shows, but I have to see a different kind of, of, of states. Okay. Mm, okay, then, oops, we need to move this. Here and the other piece. Okay. And then the computer node that is assigned to the job. Well, okay, let's check again what is the status of the job. This, jobs don't take too much time. You can see that the jobs have finished, now are complete. We have different commands to check this, but by this point, uh, we can say that the only active for me is the batch, that is this one. 
So if I check the what I have now in my folder, we can see that it, it's close. I have now uh, this. I have now these uh, log files created. Uh, the log files uh, are composed for two arguments. The first one is this is learn uh, percentage A. The A uh, is replaced for the for the number of the job. And the and the A in lowercase is the index. It means that it's one of these numbers. So we have this relation here. If we check, uh, for example, the output of one of these, let's say that I'm going to see the slur index one, the error. Let's read first the error. We can see here that the information was lower, the modules active and some information about the packages that I'm using. And then here at the end, we can see that the several assignment was com completed successfully, uh, some plots that I made, and also uh, the table was exporting successfully. So here is not reported any error. Now let's to see the same part of the output file, of the same job also, okay? Uh, let's check now. Uh, here in the output, we have um, a very pretty similar information because uh, the job was successfully completed. No? We have the job ID. We have the index that was assigned here. That is one of these ones. Uh, the, the array or sample name that you are seeing here is because here I put a label to C here. Uh, what is the sample name that is running? The sample name is captured here. When I read uh, the files, that is a line of information. Let me show you. Here is the there is a file that is called array target's name. That is this one. So. I have here the list of experiments. So the, the one that we are that we have assigned to the index one is in sequential order. So we have the the EPO42 uh, uh, underscore one and and we continue reading the other experiments. So in this, I catch it here the first one, the first index is assigned to here, and I'm reading here the information. So this is the information that we have here. Uh, we have the array number, then we have information that is processed in the script, some examples, and then I have this label that is saying the end of the job without any hold. So this, this label is this one, the last one. Okay, so let's see now what we have in plots. In plots, we have the full information that was processed. So remember that here, I process these experiments, and we can see here. Um, for example, let's let's pull some of these. For example, I'm going to pull this one. It's the same. So it's still this plot that is a. Uh, a graph of the mitochondrial content and also this small table with information about quantities, units, and all and other kinds of information. Okay, so this is the the basic structure of the of the job array. Um, also, in, another important information is the the mem assignation, and this is for each job. So we need to be careful to just take the kind of memory that we really need in order to to run efficient efficiently the job. And uh, this is different because when I was running uh, some jobs in the FGE system, uh, the total the total mem uh, was uh, like splitted 
uh, among the five or six jobs that I was creating. So in this case, uh, the memory is assigned uh, for each job according with the documentation. Um, we can do some experiments about this. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, do you have some question until this point? Before to, to show some examples that fails? No? Okay. So now I'm going to delete again the information. Let's see that I'm going to remove the information that is in plots. And also I'm going to remove the information that is in lots. Okay, and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to run this one. No, the one. Okay, this is this uh this script have um a couple of errors in order to to make it fail. Um some of these is, for example, the uh, the these target names doesn't exist. Uh, I don't have a a file uh, with this name. So if I read here the information, I don't see anything like this. No, it's array targets. It's not targets names. Also, uh, another error is that, for example, here that I'm running the script. I'm not assigning the, the index that is going to be processed. So there is a couple of errors that are accumulated in the script. Now I'm going to run the, this one. Okay. So this is is the is the error. Okay, let's run it and just to see the status. Okay, now the 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 array was built, uh, but let's to see the the results. Here we have that this is the the sequential number of the of the server manager, and this is these are the indexes that I have provided in the screen. Yes, again from one to five. Okay, let's do check it. Okay, continue reading. While it's reading the information, I also want to show you that, for example, I found very useful these commands. Um, for example, this one, where I want to track a particular job. For example, I know that this is my only experiment that is related with mouse. So uh, I can track it, this one. And I can see uh, more information about the the job, uh, not just the job ID and the job array assignment, the task, but also I can see information about the, the name uh, of the files that I'm processing, also my user ID and group. And if, if, if this file had dependencies, in this case, doesn't have dependencies. And also I can see uh, what node is assigned, uh, number of nodes that are using to process this information, a number of tasks that is split in this job. And also I can see um, information about the work paths where this information is wrong. So uh, this is the main provided, et cetera. Sometimes we, Need to provide this information uh, to the to the uh, manager of the salon in order to to try to solve some issues. The other uh, comment that I found useful is this one. That basically what does is to change the name of the job by a new name uh, in order to track specific information. So, for example. Well, I, it has finished. Let's do the, the, the results. Okay. Uh, okay. Before to continue. Uh, so here, now we have, uh, a, let's, let's do read the, the results. Let's do read first the plots folder. And we don't have anything because uh, this is an error. So the information was not processed. So 
to track uh, what could happen, I'm going to go to the logs and, and I'm going to try to read what happened. Let's to see that I'm going to read the first one or the second one, whatever. To learn and the first index, okay? Here's the output, the output information. So in the output, we have the, uh, the module was loaded, but uh, here, where the job is assigned and the index is assigned, I don't have cut uh, in array in array sample, so the information was not read. It. These kind of errors are not errors of slur, are errors of, of code errors. So sometimes these are a bit more challenging to discover because these are human errors. So the the index was not provided to the array, and in the case of the error. Of the error log, we have more information that can be more uh, comprehensive, more more useful. We have here the job ID, the index. Again, we cannot see the name of the sample, so something happened. I'm uh, sorry, this is the the part of the end. Uh, okay, I have here the modules. I have here uh, that that was missing the the only argument that I know of in the in the script. So I don't have this information here. Uh, anyway, it process the, the the script, look at the libraries that I'm working. And also here I can see an error, uh, more explicit, error in argument one. Uh, sub script out of bounds because I didn't provide if we if we go to the script again here. I didn't provide the, the index here. I need to add here the ID that is captured here. That is the number of the sample that is going to be processed. So that is why here it's, it's out of bounds or it's missing. It's saying here and it's saying here again. And so the execution is halted. So now we have this information here, but we can also go to the mail information and we have here the job. Uh, this is a summary that it's a that it's a this is a summary of all the jobs, not just of one array by by time. We need to know this because uh, if you want to have one uh, email information by array, you need to add some additional directives to the to the slow script. But anyway. Uh, the issue here is that if you read the if you read the the information that is coming to your email, I feel a bit confused because the exit code is zero zero. Uh, it means that it was complete, no? But uh, in fact, this this uh, script fails. Uh, it must to be another exit status. So my um, uh, one solution is to provide to the to the script uh, here uh, some kind of directives where you are you make a setup of the number of exits that you want to receive. Um, I was seeing that uh, yesterday, but I didn't finish to to set up the information. Just to say you that uh, sometimes we don't receive the the exit status that we are expecting to have. Because it seems to be that at the begin at the end, it's not considered that the information was processed, even when we have a halted in this way, because it's not properly an error of the of, of, of slur. So you need to work more the script in order to have more uh, more informative uh, uh, outputs to, to solve a problem. And well um uh, this is really all that I have. Uh, I have here um, the information that I have used uh, and also put, don't forget that we have to we have to change here the number of arrays that we are processing uh, that we need to if we want the out if we don't stay these log files, uh, the output and the error logs is going to be in the the same path that this process of this information. So if 
doesn't imply an error. Your information is going to be up in, in the same way, in the same path. Also remember that you need, uh, well, in this case, I must submit this in, in a file in order to have here, or to build the job arrays, it needs most to be a match between the number of information or lines that you are processing here and the number of the arrays. And well, you want in a specific partition, uh, you need to check what information we have available here. We, we can see here um, some uh, possible uh, nodes that we can use if you want one specific. Uh, and that's it. Don't forget to load the modules that you need. Uh, and also, uh, a last word. A last word. Uh, I have also to deal a bit with um, with uh, in the transition when I was changing from SGE to to Sloan, uh, I have to work a bit with the information here. Yes, here. Uh, these lines are, are some variations of these lines in the Slack channel that can work fine, but I need to add this information uh, that I found in some code in order to to, don't, to avoid some kind of warnings that I was receiving when I was loading the phone. And also, well, remember that there are different uh, um, variables variables that are built. So for Sloan, for example, we have to load this module, but for, for SGE, we load a different module. So just make double check in order to have this set up properly done. And that's the only thing that I did not change. At the beginning, I tried also to, to build some modules here, but this doesn't work well, well so. I discard this information. So to finish, uh, my recommendation is first for the for the beginners, beginners, uh, attend the Sloan meetings because most of this information is provided there. And also consider that when something is not running properly, uh, we have another, we need to consider another possibilities. Uh, for example, the and in variables, the package paths, code issues, etc. For example, uh, my my job at the beginning was running in appearance well, but I had to reinstall some of the packages because it was issues with the with the packages with the m variables. So there is a couple of things to do, and most of this information is from the channel. And well. That's it. If you have some question or some recommendation to me, I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thanks. I was curious, you have um the partition where you are telling it what partition to go to? Is that absolutely necessary or is that an added for when you guys want to use like some kind of specific? Uh, this is a good, this is a good. I think, I think, absolutely, absolutely. I think that, uh, that if you don't choose a partition, you are going by default to, to go assign it to the shared one. Uh, but I, uh, set the label here in order to remember that there is a direct uh, directory to, to do this. But I think that it's going to be assigned by default in the in the shared one. I don't know. Do you know something? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I always specify it. I mean, I know for SGE it was the default, but yeah, I'm not actually sure if it's. Uh... Because at the beginning, I tried to do this without this 
without these uh, directives, and I could I could run the the jobs, but I I didn't see if it was assigned to a specific um computer node. I I really not sure, Benjamin. I still muted. Uh, did you mute yourself? Like mm -hmm. your uh, did you turn the speakers off? I thought you did. Because of the, oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry. No, no, it's the, that that answered my question. I I'm working on revisions, so it makes I'm not using Slurm, so that everything is the same. Especially since I'm using an older version of R, it's mm -hmm. it's technically better to to keep things similar. So okay. I am curious though that I see you have memory. Uh, do you also need file size as well, or is because I I thought I saw some stuff in there that you need to say something for if it's a big file size. Well, in my case, I have to assign memory because um uh, I think the default one is fifteen. So, sorry. Yes, I think he's asking about like the h underscore f size and sg. Like I don't think there's anything analogous for slur. I was trying to look like a long time for if Slurm required that specification, but I don't think it does. I'm not totally sure, but um, that's, I was wondering the same thing. Okay. It normally only runs into when you're working with like large FASTQ files or BAM files or something like that. But it's horrible when you realize you've downloaded something and you've only gotten like 10% of it. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, yeah, yeah, not sure yet, or you haven't seen anything like that. Okay. Right. I used the uh, Slurm in the past a few years ago on John Hopkins. It was called Marxy, I think. And indeed, uh, as I recall, at least in that configuration, they never had an equivalent. There's no need to specify this file IO, you know, size on Slurm, right? Thanks. That's good to know. Good to know. Thank you. Yes, and, and as I was saying, uh, I have found in some resources when they say that some of the directives depends on the configuration of, of the manager configuration. So there are some cases where uh, there are some kind of, of labels that are not in reading. I don't know exactly why. I'm, I'm like, like most of, well, no, I don't know if you have experience in that, but uh, I have no experience on this, so this is like uh, a certain point for something that is very, very new, trying to to do this. So I think that maybe it's important to to share more inf most information in the in the Slack channel because it it has been my my first resource to to go into this. I have a lot of doubts, yeah. And then will you add your Google Doc to the, the sheet? Yes, of course. Yeah, thanks. So I can look at it. Yeah, yeah sure. And in, in this case, if we can handle and improve it and whatever, it could be super happy because I want to, to have a better version, but this is the first one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, guys. Another question, suggestion? Something in the chat. I don't know if it's old or new, but. Yeah, I think that was my old one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Well, with no questions, we see each other in the Slack channel trying to, to work with, with the, yes? Yeah, I'm. I'm hoping they'll get the keeks out of it in the next month or so before everybody needs to be on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so have a good Friday. Get a good a good weekend, everybody. Thank you.